this lesson, you will learn how to use the UFT developer test recorder. Let's go into IntelliJ and launch the test recorder from the UFT developer menu. So a new small window will open for the UFT developer recorder. And um, you can see here is a record button. Um, when you click it, it will start recording all your UI actions you are going to perform either on a browser or on any uh, Windows app or desktop app. We are going to record um, the activities on our demo app, um, which is a web application, Advantage Online Shopping. Um, so let's get started. The moment I click on start recording, it will capture everything what I will do on the UI. So you can see it has started uh, to record. I can uh, do, I can stop the recording. I can pause the recording or I can also add a verification if I want. So let's open the app and I will position it somewhere here. And let's go. To the advantage online shopping, even the navigation you can see uh, it is a recording, and so this is fine. And from here, I can now click on the login box and enter any username and a password and click on sign in. And now I would be able to capture even this uh, result by clicking on edit, and I could see here that uh, this is the uh, properties which will be used uh, for the verification the inner text and i can say uh, the identification i would like to have uh, by a css selector i can give it a name login message add now this is also added and here i can stop the test so you can see it has recorded a couple of steps. Um, I can also look into it and if I don't want a step uh, to appear, I can get rid of it. Like here, if I clicked too, uh, too many times uh, or I clicked uh, a wrong object, later on I can uh, get rid of it. Uh, here you can also see that uh, you can modify the verification you have added. So you can see it uh, directly here. Um, you can also enter comments if you want uh, directly here, uh, so you will find them also in the test script. So once you are done with all the fine tuning, you can copy the script. The Java code is generated. Again, these are the settings which are taken into account. So for IntelliJ or Eclipse, it will always generate a Java code or a JavaScript code. So let's copy it and go back into your IDE. And here, what I will do, I will create a new test, a new file, uh, which will be a UFT developer JUnit test case. And let's say this is a recorded test. Press OK. And you see the whole uh, template is now uh, prepared. I can paste my recording directly here and it shows me exactly what I have recorded. The first thing I have to do here is um, you can see it has started the browser as well. Yeah, so let's go here and say you want to import all the classes for the SDK web. So all these objects which are highlighted here in red, they will disappear. So let's do it either manually here. We could go here and say import com .hp .lft .sdk web and star. This will, will load now all the web objects and you can see this is completely fine here. So here on the top I can also rename the test. So let's say this is a recorded test. Here, um, the start reporting context is um, highlighted red. This is because we need to add the exception uh, signature on the method. So you can see here, the report exception has been added. So this is fine as well. Um, so basically, I can see here it, there's an issue with the objects or something. 
did not get recorded correctly. So here we are talking about uh, about the verification. So let me check what other options we have here. So get XPath, get CSS selector. I think this is exactly what has been uh, changed. And now the verification is uh, added and is fine. So as uh, a next step, what we can directly do is we can run the test. Uh, it will run quite fast as the UFT developer um, is very fast. So I will do some um, some waits here. So we also see what's happening. Red dot sleep, and here we say it will be in four seconds. This one I can also add to the signature. And let's go after we have entered before we click. We put wait four seconds. That's it, probably. I would say we have to find the browser. We have launched the browser with Chrome. We have the navigation which was recorded, which is completely fine. And maybe at the end I could also go and close the browser. Close. So that's fine. And now I can run the test. Okay, I've closed the application. So let's wait for the test to get started. So it has started. Here we can see the browser is launched. It enters the data checks and exit the test so we can see that execution has been passed also here in the um, j unit runner i can see it execution was successfully performed so let's check the last run results and also here in the summary i can already see that all my um, all my steps were passed and also the verification which i have added uh, was successfully so this is good everything also here for the password recording you see when you record something uh, which is secure it will not use a set value it will always use a set secure um, method so your password which you will record is always encrypted yeah? so this is also something which the recorder provides so basically when to use the recorder i think if you want to get started quickly or somebody from yeah from your uh, testing team who is not really an expert in test automation but uh, knows um, the processes quite well um so you can hand it over uh, this recorder to them and they can build the script record the script and send it back to you or you can sit together with them in a session and record the script to understand the flow of a test case so this is very useful especially when you uh, want to automate or start automating a new area in your application where you don't have the subject knowledge so here the recorder comes into play and provides your handy tool to build your test scripts and once you have recorded it you can either transform this into application models or build your own uh, functions uh, which will be reusable uh, to provide a higher maintenance um, and um, less effort in changes and so on.